The champs are here in the Big Apple for game two of the third annual Big City Classic at the Meadowlands. Syracuse won it all in 08 and 09 while Duke took home the trophy last year. It's the Orange against the Blue Devils in game two of the Big City Classic next. Welcome back to the Conica Minolta Big City Classic. And the claim of boss of lacrosse is on the line in the swamps of Jersey as number one Syracuse takes on number three Duke in a meeting of the two programs to win the last three national championships. Hello and welcome back to the Meadowlands. I'm Eamon McEnany along with the All-American goalie from Johns Hopkins, Quint Kessenick, and the 2006 Tawaratan Trophy winner from Virginia, Matt Ward. And Quint, so much focus this year so far on the college lacrosse season has been spent on low scoring games and pace of play. What are you expecting between the Orange and the Blue Devils? Theoretically, these are two teams that prefer the up-tempo game. Syracuse head coach John Desco telling us transition is in their DNA. Meanwhile, Duke's a team that's not going to back down. Both teams, tremendous team speed. This could be electric. Matt, back on the end of February, Duke was ranked as low as 19th. Now they're all the way back up to number three in the country. How'd they make up so much ground so fast? It's really become part of Duke's DNA as a program to start the season slow while they find their identity and get the right players in the right positions. And they did it this year by moving Jordan Wolf back to his natural position at attack where he has just been a dominant force. He can do it all, and I love the fact that he's got such a quick step where he can step up the field, he can finish with either hand, and Coach Tanowski told us at the end of the game, it's a clear-cut decision who's getting the ball. It's Jordan Wolf, like he did right here against Maryland in overtime, sticking it to the top portion of the cage. 26 points in his last seven games, but Quint, he might be up against his biggest challenge of his young career so far tonight. You could argue that John Laid of Syracuse is the nation's best one-on-one -on -one cover man. We call him the eraser, first-team All-American a year ago. He makes your name disappear, disappear from the box score with tenacity, great angle play, quickness, and toughness. Syracuse allowing just four goals in each of its last two contests as we take a look at our impact players brought to you by Warriors. So Syracuse offense struggling right now. They need a big night from Jojo Morasco. He's got to be able to penetrate. If this game is up tempo, we'll be talking about Joel White, the long stick midfielder who wears number 11. And there is Laid. Well, he's not a, an exceptional takeaway checker. He just never gets beat. And then for Duke, you have Zach Howe, had over 50 goals last year. He's on pace for that number again. Jordan Wolf, the dynamic freshman, and then Justin Turry, their best midi athlete. He has 10 goals and eight assists on the day, uh, on the year. And if he can step up today, he's going to put Duke in a good position. Syracuse is coached by John Desco. In 13 seasons, nothing but winning at his alma mater after taking over for Roy Simmons, the highest winning percentage of any active coach. Syracuse leads this series 5-1. to one. They've won four straight, 154 and 44 in 13 seasons. His counterpart, John Donowski, in his fifth season with Duke, 74 and 15. Five final fours with the Blue Devils. And a championship last year. Dan Wigreiser, the sophomore out of Villanova, Pennsylvania, Episcopal Academy, a record of 7-2. and two. One of six goalies to win a national championship in his freshman season. Another one of those six is his counterpart in this one, John Galloway. And with a win today, John Galloway would become the winningest goalie all time in Division I college lacrosse, looking for career win number 52. It will be Thompson against Costabile, Syracuse in orange, Duke in dark blue. And it'll be Syracuse ball first. They change it up. Duke will get it first. So we are underway in game two of the Big City Classic. John Desco even confused. Looked like a little dance move there. It'll start in the stick of New Jersey resident Jake Trapuca, the sophomore out of Mountain Lakes, New Jersey has it. He gives it up to freshman Christian Walsh. Syracuse seven and zero. Duke has won seven in a row.
Here is Offit being guarded by Kevin Drew. He draws the flag. So right away. Excuse me, Rob Rotans, 26 with the drive to the cage, drawing the flag, much to the chagrin of John Desco. So 30 seconds in, we'll have an extra man opportunity for the team from Durham. Near side official makes that push call. It's a difficult call in the sport of lacrosse. Duke starting things off with a wing dodge. If it's there, I, I don't see a push myself. Uh, if it's there, go for it yourself. Take the shot. If it's not, they usually kick that behind. Duke's offense is based on dribble penetration and then ball reversal. Duke's extra man converting on 13 of 54 opportunities. Here's Turry. Hands free. That one hit a pipe. And the Orange win the race to the sideline. Had him smoked. Yeah, and, and that's what Duke looks for in their man-up situations. They get probably their best outside shooters, George, uh, Justin Turry and, and Zach Howe, the ball in the right position. And Turry blasts that one. Just unfortunate that uh, it hit the post for the Duke team. So now Syracuse, a man down for 15 seconds. The look to clear. This is Tim Harder with the ball, a senior out of Garden City, New York, on Long Island. Galloway moves it along to Lade. Lade, a New Jersey resident out of Randolph, New Jersey, started his collegiate career at Villanova. And Syracuse just defeated a week ago, 5-4, with a goal in the closing seconds. Here's White. He'll get it in the box. Costabile picks up White. White keeps going. That is a matchup of two of the more marquee long stick midfielders in the sport, C.J. Costabile and Joel White. A sport that is position has become the glamour position in college lacrosse. So now the Syracuse offense goes to work for the first time. This is Tim Desco. Here's Thompson. So, Quint, what are some keys for the number one team in the country? They need some midfield production. Guys are going to have to hit some shots on the run. Their offense in general has to wake up. And then defensively against Duke, you're going to be tested in some individual matchups. So you're going to have to slide, rotate, and recover. Miller blows by the double team, feeds Amadon. Did someone say production from the midfield? Midi to midi. It's 1-0 Cuse. And that was a nice job by Jovan Miller, who's not known for his feeding ability. People are going to think he's taking it to the cage. He gets the extra step, pops his head up, and finds his teammate Amadon wide open on the backside. That's great. Midi to midi action. You see the backside defender, 27 in black, is giving Marasco behind the goal too much respect. And that's Chris Hips, a freshman out of Texas. He's got to come in front of the goal there and sag in, defend inside out. So John, so Duke throws a new faceoff man. It's Fowler, Brendan Fowler, the freshman out of Long Island. But Daddio, another freshman, wins it. Syracuse just 9 of 27 on faceoffs a week ago in Philadelphia in that barn burner, or should I say close game, at least, against Villanova. Back-to-back -back weeks with this orange offense only scored five goals. Some of the worst offensive production in program history. 19 turnovers. You really have to go back in the record books to take a look at when was the last time Syracuse scored five goals or less and won a couple of games. Last time they did it, scored five goals or less and won two games in a season was 1931. Last time they did two wins in a row with five goals or less was 1925. But they're off to a flying start here. It's Ian Zito. As the Cuse get some production from its second midfield line, a rarity so far in 2011. When we talked to John Desco this week, he was pretty cool and calm, maybe a little frustrated about some of the offensive woes, but got the sense that his team would be ready to play in the big city under the big lights against the name opponent. And I almost think that with such a senior-dominated team, this is a team that's been through the dance. They've been there, done that. And so getting up for some opponents might be an emotional challenge. Today, they seem ready to play. The assist from the freshman Scott Loy, a freshman out of Toledo, Ohio, who's starting to receive more playing time as Coach Desco looks for a spark from that second group. And I don't know who expected the Syracuse offense to come alive this week more, Coach Desco or Coach Donowski. 
you gave the numbers to him, and he's like, you know, this could be the day they click as there's a flag down on the loose ball. Take a look at the green jerseys, the lime green jerseys being worn by our officials. That's in tribute to the Headstrong Foundation, the Kala Lori family out of Pennsylvania has created that foundation to raise money and awareness for the fight against cancer and to aid cancer patients and their families in their struggle against that disease. Nick Kalalori lost a battle to cancer. He played for Coach Donowski at Hofstra. You see as Turi moves in, Wolf can't handle the pass. And a pick up by McGill. So another extra man opportunity for Duke goes by the wayside. It's a very, very strong Syracuse defense. One of the best in the nation over the last three or four years. John Laid, McGill, Guadagnolo, Joe White, athletic shorties, Kevin Drew with great speed. It, it's a solid group from top to bottom. And, and Syracuse has produced some of the best defensive players of all time, but they've always given up goals. And this group, I think, gets the concept of the team aspect of the defensive side of the ball better than they've ever had. And that's why they're so good at locking down other teams' offenses. Here is Miller. He has an assist already. Looking for the rollback. Good recovery by David Lawson. Lawson out there with Trapuca. At the midfield. Marasco to Keo to Thompson. Tick. Oh, it's 3 nothing Orange. <laughs> Coach Donowski thought this might be the day the Syracuse offense erupts, and unfortunately for him, he was right. Jeremy Thompson's eighth of the season makes it 3 nothing. The Orange offense. Coming to life at the Big City Classic. Duke down by three. Four programs combining for 25 national championships on display here at the Big City Classic. John Donowski's club joined that exclusive club last year, but right now, Quint, the keys aren't showing up. No, a shot selection that really haven't gotten uh, anywhere near the goal. And then score non six on six ways. You're going to have to do that anytime you play Syracuse. A, a defensive key to me is is not sliding over aggressively. You know, Syracuse is a team that lacks penetrators on offense. If you can lock down in a man to man, one on one fashion, and not slide, then you're in good shape. So far today, we've seen Duke kind of over sliding. Talk about quality shots. Three goals, three shots, and another faceoff win is Matt Harris, the freshman out of Chicago. Came up with the ground ball. Syracuse going with two long poles on the wings, and there's a easy call against Tom Montelli as he pushes Tim Desco down to the ground. So with a three-goal lead and just over 10 seconds left to play, Syracuse with the extra man. cross check, one minute. So it'll be a one-minute extra man off the cross check, and ESPNU's coverage of college lacrosse continues Saturday afternoon. As these number one Syracuse Orange travel a little bit farther south down Jersey to take on Princeton. Old Spice College Lacrosse on ESPNU Saturday at 4 Eastern. Syracuse extra man not exactly clicking. Six of 27 this season. Coach, De Coach Desco still tinkering with it this week in practice. Here's Keo. Desco can't handle the grab. Here is Costabile in the open field. He moves it along to Wolf. Whoa, there's a save by Galloway. That one had some mustard on it, and Galloway grabbed it. Same shot off the hip, down at the knees or off the thighs is a goal. And Syracuse is one of the few teams that doesn't really run set plays in the man up. Desco with the bouncer. Make it 7 of 28 on the man up for Coach Desco as his son makes it a 4 0 ball game. And, and again.
Galloway, 51 career wins. You can't rattle him. He knows this game. Drops down low, watches top hand, makes the beautiful stop, and then Desco, old school bouncer. Wigreiser had poor balance on that. Never really saw it out of, out of the stick. Syracuse plays their man up off field. It's basically two triangles. It's essentially triangle lacrosse, like it would be much like a basketball. They just do it. They're so smart and skilled offensively. That's why they're able to capitalize. Very similar first quarter to the one we had earlier today between Hopkins and North Carolina. That one turned out to be a one goal final second affair. Let's see if Duke can rally and make this one interesting. Four goal lead in the sport of lacrosse. Certainly not an insurmountable deficit, especially with a team that's putting up almost 13 goals a game. And, and Duke last week was down, I believe, six to one at Georgetown at one point. So they're definitely a team that has enough offensive firepower to make a run and come back in a, a game like this. I don't know if Georgetown has Syracuse defense. Uh, that's quite that good, but Duke's very capable of making runs themselves. Here's Justin Turry. Moves it over to Rob Rotans, being guarded by Drew. This is Christian Walsh. You see Lade coming way out on Wolf, trying to deny him the ball. Duke offense being pressed way out. Rotans looking for a step on Drew. He loses it. I think they feel confident in their matchup. Squadagnola hounding Walsh. Look at Drew with a shorty just getting out and playing the ball. I'm in your face. So now Hal taking a run at McGill. He gives it up. Galloway comes out and knocks it away. It'll still be Duke Ball, but he did that a bunch of times last week against Villanova. 11 saves, but the story was the way he came out and picked off a couple of Wildcat passes. Now Wolf up top to Rotans, not ready to shoot. Can't beat your man. No reason to slide or double team. Syracuse owning the perimeter matchups. That is something you do not hear very often in a Duke ball game. Walsh. Good recovery by Guadagnolo. Moves it over to Chapuca. Taking a run at Harder. Harder pushes him off. Wolf loses his footing, shoots high. And you can see the explosion right there from Jordan Wolf. Uh, John Lee did a nice job to stay with him, but he does that little stutter step and then gets that explosion on his next one where he creates separation on the goal line extended to get his hands free. Coach Donowski 0-1 against Syracuse while at Duke. Semi-final affair up in Foxborough. Syracuse won at 17-7. Okay, one thing Duke has got to do a better job of right now, using picks to free up the ball carrier and off ball. Walsh looking to make Galloway pay for coming out of the crease, and he does. A great individual effort from the freshman out of Baltimore gets Duke on the board. Christian Walsh is deceptively strong, has terrific poise, and takes a beating when he goes to the goal. He's not going to run by you, but he'll try to run through you. Takes a beating, possesses the ball. Look at the patience at the end of this play to make sure he capitalizes. Kind of like a, a slow Billy Bitter move from, from game one. It, it really did look like the same double team came. He ducks underneath. And you know what? He doesn't make up and probably what he makes up for is probably being a little tougher and a little stronger than Billy Bitter. Doesn't have that quickness, but is able to make those plays. Both Christian Walsh and Billy Bitter prepping at Deerfield Academy. Playing for Chip Davis. You see Walsh starting to come alive on the offensive end. Costabile looking to thread the needle. McGill got a stick on it, and Galloway winning the race to the end line. Although I don't know if there was a shot there. Take Costabile's a guy, to me, the straw that stirs this Duke drink. He has got to get points whether it's assists or goals or ground ball play, I, I think his energy plays mean so much to this Duke team. He's as good an athlete on the field as there is. He's so good on the ground balls. He takes faceoffs, but he doesn't even really care about the clamp. He's just trying to let you pick it up and, and go after him because he's so athletic and great on ground balls. It was Costabile, of course, off the opening faceoff in overtime on Memorial Day, beating Scott Rogers and leading Duke to its first ever national championship in overtime over Notre Dame. Greg DeLuca going way out on Jovan Miller. Now Miller gets a step. No angle, so he moves it along to Morasco. 
Marasco being guarded by Hips, now switched. Billy Connors, sophomore against sophomore. Feed to Miller, step down. Wiggy is not seeing it well right now for Duke. It's 5-1. Wiggy, even though he won a national championship last year as a freshman, didn't put up the best numbers. And it was a question mark in my mind for Duke coming into the season. Has turned it around this year, is making stops that he didn't make the season before, but today he's off to a slow start. Looks almost as shaky as he did at times last year. Five goals and all, or all have been no saves, all goals. It's good defense. This is a stop you have to make. And when you call it, he's just not seeing the ball. I've seen him in practice down in Jacksonville. I thought he looked superb the next day against Notre Dame was not seeing the ball. He was pulled in that game, though, and he came back, made 41 saves in the next three games. And, you know, we talked to Coach Danowski this week. He said neutral position. What did, well, you, what did that mean to you as a former goalie? Not much. Uh, the fact is, when Wig Riser is relaxed and patient and comfortable and confident, he's very good. His numbers are up this year. They're up about 8%. But today, he's let the surroundings and the importance of this game get to him and he's clearly not himself yet now that can change like this whether it's one stop or a hit or somebody coming over and putting their arm around him you know it, it, goalie like hitting or pitching or playing golf is a psychological there's that exclusive club our own quint kesnick in 1987 one of six freshmen to win the national championship john galloway winning one as a freshman and a sophomore It was easier to win as a freshman than it was later on. Obviously, I didn't get another one, but you're just along for the ride, man. You know, it, you're, you're, you don't know what to expect. It's about as re ever relaxed as I ever was in the championship game. No call on McGill as he stops David Lawson in his tracks. Second time through was a lot more emotionally and psychologically taxing. Now Wolf goes to Offit. This is Duke's second midfield line. Offit, Lawson, and Tucker Virtue. Offit shoots high. So you're a young player watching this game, whether you're a defender or a midfielder, watch the technique, the stance, the body positioning, the angle play of the Syracuse defenders. Wolf loses it out of his stick. Virtue there to bail him out with the ground ball. Joel White way out on Lawson. Now Offit being guarded by the short stick, Drew. Offit a natural attackman growing up in... Washington, D.C. Got the shot off. Now they throw it away. Nice play. Here is Joel White. Good defense by Lawson and Virtue to stop White, but he comes up with the ground ball to Marasco. And that's what differentiates Joel White from almost any other long stick in the country is his ability on ground balls in the middle of the field to get creative, to flip it and goose it to himself like that. Not many people can do that. There is White, the mini of the year, the first defensive specialist to win that award, and it was because of plays like this. Watch him goose this ball to himself and then drop the stick down low to avoid being checked. Now it's worth noting in high school he was a midfielder that made the under 19 world team as a midfielder. So he was an exceptional short stick offensive player until he got to Syracuse when they really needed an athlete at that position. Here's Loy. He has an assist already. Keo inside. Marasco backs up. Being guarded by Montelli. Marasco puts on the brakes. This is Bobby Eilers. There's a shot and a goal. It's a shooting gallery right now for number one, and they're taking advantage. If Syracuse starts getting production out of the midfielders, dodging to score for themselves and winning their individual matchups, they're just so skilled on offense, no one could contain them. This is just a nice job of them running offense. And, and number 30, Bobby Ayers just goes down and, and sticks it near side high. Simple little alley dodge, first career goal, beats Wig Riser to the near post. Uh, 
Sophomore has yet to make a save. Again, uh, when we had the Duke Notre Dame game, Coach Danowski did not hesitate. Made a switch in the second half. Costabile comes up with the ground ball, but Harris right there, check his stick. Monday night, ESPNU delivers two shows to preview the men's tournament championship. First at 1 Eastern, catch a special edition of the experts as host Lowell Galindo and our experts preview the championship game of the men's tournament. Then at 5 Eastern, see the College Basketball Live National Championship Special. I was curious about that conference affiliation. Do Syracuse fans pull for Connecticut since they're Big East clubs? Probably not. I wouldn't think so. And I don't think Connecticut fans would root for Syracuse. I think at this point you don't root for anyone if your, your team's not in it, right? That's why so many people root for Cinderella. Thompson goes down, no flag. Three minutes left of a first quarter that's been all orange. Here is Marasco. Now Amidon. Saw the double coming, moves it along to Miller. Miller being guarded by Luke Dupree, a freshman out of New England. He falls down. Still has it. There's a whistle. Timeout, Syracuse with 2.21 to play. Coach Desco didn't want to give up the possession. It's the best they've played so far this year, the Syracuse team. Coach Desco's club up big early in game two of the Big City Classic. There's a good look at Lady Liberty back here in the New York City metropolitan area. Syracuse number one, seven and zero, but skating on thin ice lately, and it started at the faceoff classic against Georgetown. They had to go to overtime. Stephen Keo won that one, nine eight. Then up next, Hopkins double overtime again. Stephen Keo with the game winner. They won that one, five four. Then after a five goal win over Albany last week on the road against Villanova, JoJo Morasco with six seconds left, the game winner. They survive again, winning that one 5-4. So three of their last four victories of the one goal variety. And this Syracuse team reminds me a lot of the 2005 Johns Hopkins team that won seven games by one goal. Uh, they just know what to do and put themselves in the right places to win those tight situation games. You see every opponent they've played so far, just like this one, ranked when they face Syracuse. So out of the timeout, Jovan Miller looking to create. That pass gets picked off. And Miller hustles back. Yard sale in East Rutherford. Good hustle by Miller. Makes some noise here at the big house in East Rutherford. There is a flea market here on Sundays out in the parking lot next to Meadowlands Racetrack. Greg DeLuca losing his stick. That's what we like to call getting tracked down. So the offense gets it back. 90 seconds left to play in the first quarter, dominated by the number one team in the country, looking to improve to 8 0, making a statement right now against number three. Amadon on the invert. Now Desco being guarded by the short stick. So he'll take DeLuca behind. Loses him completely. Montelli on the slide. Yard sales all over the place every Sunday in Bergen County. Wigreiser in trouble. He'll eat some turf, but Costabile there to come up with it. Now he's triple team. There is that athleticism for the junior out of Connecticut. That may help Wigreiser. Sometimes getting popped like that will wake you up. Get you mad, right? Get your adrenaline flowing. Hips in trouble, loses it. So here comes Syracuse in the open field. McGill. Throws it away. Getting a little sloppy now with 31 seconds left. Montelli holds the corner. <laughs> Playing with some anger. Wig riser. We saw this last week with Pierce Bassett. You've got to move your feet on those outlet passes. Guys like Matt Ward are trained to put their stick up in that passing lane and deflect or pick up the ball. And if you're nonchalant or too casual, 
you're, you're, you're asking for it. And most of these attackmen can probably jump a little bit higher than I used to be able to, so sticking my stick up doesn't I'm going to pump you and step around <laughs> and, and, and roll out of the pocket. Duke wasting time on the clear, down to 10 seconds in the quarter. Montelli gets it across midfield. Now with five. Al gets popped by McGill and loses it. Total domination. That's pretty much a fitting way for the first quarter to end. Syracuse jumped on him right off the bus and has a five goal lead. The Blue Devils have to play catch up in game two of the Big City Classic. Amadon got it going and set the tone. The defending champs are in trouble in New Jersey. Welcome back to game two of the Big City Classic. Things starting to pick up here at the end of the first quarter. First, Tom Montelli with a vicious check, certainly legal. But then his goalie tasted the turf for the Meadowlands. Ooh. Certainly legal again, but physical play has been a dominant conversation in college lacrosse so far. Well, they changed the rule to protect the head and neck area of players, and they've been more strict. We've seen some good hits. Cornell, you use that shoulder. And then we've seen some good hits actually be called a foul. That was actually a penalized, a penalty against Maryland, which was a real shocker. This, a helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact that led to a two-minute violation, and that's a referee's discretion this year. But it's interesting, as you mentioned, we go back to that first hit by Johns Hopkins. That one was not called. That was so not it's called. it's very interesting, the emphasis on targeting the head and the neck, but they're still going to miss that, something. That once Princeton in a while. athlete got a concussion. Uh, th there was a memo sent out, and they've certainly focused on it, almost to the point where uh, too many hits are now getting called penalties. And even Coach Janowski, we talked to him this week, said he's teaching his guys, you know, let's not hit them at this point because you're more than likely going to get a penalty. And that's unfortunate for the game, but I understand the need to protect the players. The helmets aren't made for that kind no, of contact. No, we've seen that. Uh, anytime there's helmet to helmet contact, there's a good chance of the concussion. What we've seen this year, I mean, it's just amazing. The key is the helmet, the head, and neck area are off limits, period. And it's just a tough thing for some of these D guys because a lot of these big hits come off ground balls where people are sticking their head down and looking to the ground. And so they're just starting to look up. And at that point, it's tough to get them in the chest. It's tough to hit them in the right places, and the rest are going to have to call these penalties. Very similar to a problem in the NFL. I'm sure Jet fans here in this stadium remember a key call in the second half in that AFC Championship game against the Steelers. Keeping a drive alive for Pittsburgh on a helmet-to-helmet -helmet call that quite honestly probably wasn't called five years ago in an AFC Championship game or any NFL game. And Matt Lovejoy of Virginia's hit on John Greeley is not a penalty last year. Duke's got to find something offensively. I, I think they've got to run their offense through Justin Turry, 12 and Black or Wolf, the freshman from behind the net. Al from out of his comfort zone, getting off a good shot anyway. Galloway going down and getting it for his fourth save. Syracuse defensemen are owning their individual matchups. Duke cannot run by the short stick D middies of Syracuse, especially Kevin Drew. So they need to find other ways to attack. Tommy Palasek, number 14, now in the game for Syracuse. Transfer student from Johns Hopkins. He has the ball right now, being guarded by Montelli. You know, it's interesting, Matt, that you say that. You watch the tape of the Johns Hopkins game or you watch it live, everyone talked about Johns Hopkins being deliberate or not forcing the issue. How do you force the issue if you can't win a matchup? If you can't get off a good shot, I'm just supposed to take a shot. Speaking of forcing the issue, Miller to Harder. It's 7-1. Everyone's getting involved for the Orange. John Danowski's got to be considering a goalie change. I don't see any movement on the sideline. Jovan Miller's had a nice game distributing the ball. Good feed inside. Harder, the defensive midfielder, stays on the field and converts. And that, that always gets great karma going on the sideline when, when an unsung hero type guy scores a goal. Jovan Miller said it was time to crank it up this week to the Syracuse media. Thought he was kind of in a slump after going scoreless against Albany and Johns Hopkins. Switch sticks, stay late at practice, even went to church more. But he felt it was coming alive with a strong fourth quarter against Villanova. Now Thompson, excuse me, Chris Daddio wins it cleanly against Costabile. This faceoff's not over yet, though. If I'm Duke, 
let Kasuga go after him, lock off those other players, and make the ball stay in Daddy O's stick. He's not accustomed to that type of pressure. If Duke does make a switch at goal, senior Mike Rock was the starter last year up until the quarterfinals. He was pulled against North Carolina. Wigreiser took the job over for the rest of that championship run. So they do have an experienced backup. Here is Miller playing with a purpose this evening at the Big City Classic. And he'll take a run at Terrence Molinari. Thompson loses his man. Gets popped by Montelli, and that draws a flag. On cue, you talk about physical hits getting called. Tom Montelli's going to the penalty box. And this, in my opinion, is a prime example of the refs overprotecting players. This is lacrosse. You're allowed to hit people on ground balls. Looks like you hit some square in the chest from the, the first viewpoint we had up here. We'll see what it looks like on tape. But you, you're supposed to be able to body people up on ground balls, and that is right shoulder to shoulder no head to helmet contact whatsoever just a bad bad call in my opinion by the way I agree. together on the stick as well i first thought you know the, maybe the stick might have been leading, lead with the head not lead with the head thompson's head bottom, neck were not touched bottom line is this a big time hit is getting called the, they, the refs that wasn't even a big time hit that was a bump that was a no, shot right. Eamon, i could hit you harder right now well than, you have than, many than, times than he just did and, and the thing is that just Does that mean you go away for a minute <laughs> Just eliminate hitting in the game if you're going to call that a penalty and make it. Come on, we already have a sport like that. It's called soccer. Wigreiser makes his first save of the ball game. I'm just saying it's putting too much power in the rest right here, and they're calling these penalties. If you're going to call that a, a penalty, just get rid of hitting and make it a lot easier for these refs. I hope they don't go that far because part of the allure of this sport to play it and certainly to watch it. And I'm saying that in a disappointed tone. No, I understand. I no, I understand. It's just. I, I just can't disagree. Then, you know what? I mean, some of the coaches talk about the equipment. If the equipment isn't ready for physical contact, change the equipment. Go back to those big bulky shoulder pads you had to wear back in the day. As that shot gets blocked, here is Mr. Excitement in the open field. This is his calling card. Joel White leading the break. Nice pass. Textbook four on three led by Joel White. And Marasco there to finish it. The bigger the game, the better they play. Certainly the offense has come to life, and the wheels are off the bus for the defending national champions. Why do some consider Joel White the best long stick midfielder in college lacrosse? Defense to offense. Well, we thought they might break the scoreboard in this one, but right now only one team's involved in the party. Syracuse up by seven. But Coach Desco's offense had not been playing this well leading up to this ball game. Well, today you see Jovan Miller catching the, uh, a feed from Marasco. Eilers unassisted. The shooting's been sensational. Coming into today, the last two games around 17%. They can't miss today. And it's been an epic start for Syracuse. They're just placing their shots, pacing their passes, and, and just playing pinpoint accurate lacrosse. Jovan Miller, the only multiple goal scorer, I believe. It's really been a, a shared offensive outburst. This kind of leads leads us, I mean, I think, you know, Big East this year, Big East with Notre Dame and Villanova, ACC struggling. It was a conference last year that only had two losses the entire year. The and ACC it, certainly looks like it's taking a step back this year. what they were last year, yeah. Coach Donowski already with a loss out of conference to Notre Dame and Penn. And if you look at, you, you mentioned Penn, you look at the depth of the Ivy League this year, they may not have the explosive teams as the Big East and the ACC, but as a whole, there's no really weak spot there. You would have said Dartmouth, but they're playing great lacrosse now too. C.J. Costabile going behind as Duke needs a spark. Duke again, coming in winners of seven in a row, moving up 16 spots in the poll since the end of February and it looked like playing as good lacrosse as anyone but right now they are getting Syracuse's A game and they weren't ready for it. 
Here is Trapuca. Trapuca looking to run by Drew and win a matchup. That shot's high. Duke getting a win last week over a Big East opponent, Georgetown. And, and Duke is a young team, and games like this can happen where you don't necessarily bring it. You don't know. You haven't been through the motions, so you can play a full season. So I'm not completely surprised with this, but when Syracuse comes out and plays the way they do, these young kids haven't been able to adapt. Yeah, and it's, it's, it, it's interesting this year. We're still trying to figure out who's good and who's not by Team A beat Team B, Team B lost to Team C. I mean, Duke is back up to number three because of wins over Maryland and North Carolina. And there have been weeks where you really wonder about Maryland and North Carolina. There's a shot and a goal as Howell takes a little bit off it. And that confused Galloway. A Duke turnaround to me starts with their veteran players, guys like Tom Montelli, CJ Costabile winning faceoffs, and then Zach Howell. Put up big numbers this year, 26 goal this season. Nice job by Trapuca drawing the double team. I love Howell's shooting motion. That was left handed, that's his offhand. That shot was not moving very fast, but it was put to a pretty good spot. Yeah, it's great, a great placement there. Let's take a look at our player portfolio brought to you by Sector Spiders. Zach Howell, the senior out of Huntington, New York, continuing to move up the all-time lists in Duke lacrosse. I'll tell you, Howell's a guy that drafted pretty late Major League Lacrosse after putting up, I don't know, 70 points last year. How do you think his game is going to fit in Major League Lacrosse? It, it, I don't know if he has the athleticism to run by some of these bigger, more physical kids, but if he finds himself in a good position, he could potentially step in as a midfielder and, and look in for inverted opportunities, but just to get in the right shooting situation because that's what he's best at. Not sure he has the athleticism to run by anyone. Lawson gets the shot blocked. He completely faked out the defense and had a great look, but somehow he got blocked. After Costabile won the faceoff. A well, good time to go right now as this defense is not set up. They're all spread out. Duke making substitutions as well as the second midfield line goes out there. Here's Virtue, Virtue getting the pass, coming through the box, being guarded by Thompson as we approach the nine-minute mark in the second quarter. Here's Howe being guarded by McGill. Now often being guarded by Joe Moore, converted long stick. Now Wolf on the switch. Delayed quickly recovers. Wolf coming from up top. Walsh gets a step on Guadagnolo. Here's Howe. Biding up McGill. Walsh standing still when he makes the catch. Virtue moves it over to the wing, being guarded by Thompson. Galloway makes the save. So Virtue got inside, but Galloway was ready for his fifth save of the ball game. That's got to be deflating to an offense to have it that long and move it around and have the goalie have the answer. Now Thompson on the clear. They've got to create, Duke has to create openings off ball on offense by setting picks and screens. They've got to try to set picks for the ball. They just right now cannot beat their man one on one. Just think about Butler and basketball, the way they create and then with good passing, they get open looks. They don't beat you off the dribble very often. Miller being guarded by Offit. Offit, a natural attackman. That would be advantage Cuse. Instead, they tried Thompson at Lawson. And Wigreiser makes a strong save. So maybe getting popped was the answer late in the first quarter. Now seven minutes left in the second. Connors in trouble, gets drilled, loses it. Here he is again, Joel White in transition. But Montelli and the Blue Devils are back. Desco didn't see Dupree, and that'll be an easy call as Desco goes down. Dupree's getting his money's worth. 
And Desco came out of the box. So the freshman from New Hampshire just ran over Desco right in front of the officials. And you can kind of see that penalty coming from about five yards before he made contact. He was coming in high. Desco's back was turned. He wasn't able to regain his composure and play for it. Those are the penalties that kind of drive coaches nuts. When it's kind of that simple right there, it's just blatantly in the back, driving him to the ground. You have to show restraint and you have to think ahead. The, the key breakdown was the clear. Duke clearing with a defender up the box, substitution box side. Nothing good ever happens over there by that substitution box on clears. Syracuse one of two on the extra man. There's Thompson with space, moving it along. Amidon, going to get that cannon free. Now Marasco. There's Amidon to Thompson with the fake. Puts it back in the holster. Syracuse being patient. Here's Gilbert. Desco creeping in. Amidon's there if they give it to him. Here we go. Good Wig stop. Riser, there's a big time stop. Amidon has a cannon, but Wig Riser was ready for it. I told you the hit would help him. Left side of your screen, Amidon, time and room, one of the better shooters in the nation. Tries to overpower Wig Riser. Tell you that, that hit, got the blood flowing, got the adrenaline going. He's made, what, three stops since the hit? And you can see that when he really exploded towards the ball, which he wasn't doing early in the game. He was kind of back on his heels. There he jumped forward and was able to catch up with Amidon, who can really, really bring it. So can the Duke offense bring it? Here's Turry, he's been quiet. Walsh standing still, has Galloway in Guadagnolo caught up. Goes to his left. Forced the shot, you heard that stick check all the way up here. And it'll be Duke ball. Under five minutes to play in the first half of game two of the Big City Classic. Number one all over number three. Here's Rotance. Turry makes the catch, but not in a position to shoot, so he dodges and can't put it on cage, but he draws the penalty as he gets crossed into the crease. I think he's really got to capitalize on that opportunity right there. They did a nice job moving the pass. Yeah, he did get hit from behind, but when you're that close to the goal, you got to make him count. And that's a, for Syracuse, a fortunate break that Turry missed the cage. Brian McGill will go to the box. Hey, this is big here at 8-2. At Give yourself a chance. Physical play by Syracuse on the inside. You're going to pay the price. They play their angles well, and, and that'll be a deterrent next time Terry push, pushes towards the middle. Watch for number zero, Josh Dion. He leads Duke with four extra man goals. Interesting set with two behind. He was money against North Carolina, cutting down the middle to the crease. Yuka feeds inside, Galloway denies Turry. And that's just a motive, uh, a momentum killer right there when you do get an opportunity, uh, one of the few you've had in the game, and John Galloway steps up and makes a great save on the pinpoint. Galloway staring at win number 52, which would eclipse Scott Batchgalupo of Princeton. Six saves now. Had a chance to talk to Scott today. He really wasn't sure he knew the record. I said, oh, what do you think about your record being broken? As Wigreiser makes a nice save on Desco right on the doorstep. He now has four. His response was, what record? But he is for now tied with John Galloway. Before you tune into the Women's NCAA National Championship game, catch ESPNU's two preview shows. First at 1 Eastern, catch a special edition of the experts as host Lowell Galindo and our experts preview the women's NCAA National Championship game. Then at 6 Eastern, see the College Basketball Live Women's NCAA National Championship special. Here's Desco with Montelli all over him. Here's Ian Zito, he already has one. 
That one's off the cage. Palasek there for the backup momentarily. Montelli now all over him. Molinari in there. That's going to be a push. Looked like Gilbert from behind on Molinari. I like Tom Montelli a lot. I think he's one of the better defenders in the country. A candidate for top All-American honors. Uh, originally a long stick midfielder. He's playing close now. He's fast. He's physical. He's good with the ball and a stick. Another turnover on the clear, but Molinari gets it back and he gets rewarded it by rewarded for it by getting drilled. So this one is going nowhere fast for the Blue Devils as Connors almost scores an own goal. And now you have to Third. worry about the 30 second to clear. Uh, Duke's going to be forced to kind of wing it down the field there. I'm thinking. I'm not really sure about it. Here's DeLuca. He has a man ahead of him. It's Lawson, and he doesn't get it to him, and it's a turnover. So two failed clears in a row for the Blue Devils, and here we go the other way. They got the extra man, Desco, but he can't make the catch. Things getting sloppy now. Keep your head up. Costabile can't keep it in, and it goes away. So Duke panicking a little bit now on the clears. And no rhythm whatsoever as Costabile is going to come out of the ball game. Coming up on the Warrior Halftime Report, a Warrior Pro Session on fast breaks with Ned Crotty and Matt Donowski, two former Duke All-Americans, a look back at the Johns Hopkins North Carolina game, and the first half highlights and stats. And speaking of fast breaks, Joe White leading the one for a goal. We'll probably be on the highlight reel. Any more eligibility for Crotty and Donowski? <laughs> I thought that was going to be Matt's line, the ACC rival. No, I didn't think that I would mean, come they could from use him today. You know, you think about the poise and experience, uh, the, all the Duke teams that we've seen over the past, I don't know, five or so years, since 05, let's say. A veteran team that, that relished an atmosphere like this. I think this is really the first time I've seen uh, a younger, inexperienced Duke team maybe, a little, you know, not, not handle the, the big stage as well. Well, that's what Coach Donowski said. Hey, we had to relearn how to coach a young team. We were kind of on scholarship our first four years in Durham with such an experienced team. And next Saturday, North Carolina on the road to take on Virginia ACC opponents. Two teams now that will be looking for a victory in a big way. Number five against number four, April 9th on ESPN from Charlottesville. As we take a look at our upcoming schedule on the ESPN networks. Albany Johns Hopkins, Scott Moore and Dave Petromala, two former teammates and roommates going head to head once again. Albany coming up with a big one yesterday over Harvard. A great schedule, Georgetown, Notre Dame next Sunday. I hope we get great weather next weekend. April game, Clockner Stadium on the hill, the flowers, campus, it's, 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 there's nothing like it. And, I love going to Charlottesville in April. And the one game I kind of look at there, I think Johns Hopkins at Maryland, you see six first 10. I think those numbers will be much higher in a couple weeks. I think Maryland's got the talent. They look great against UVA. And then Johns Hopkins is really starting to gain some confidence and momentum. And these young players are stepping up and becoming superstars. Putting your pole together tonight, right, Eamon, when you, when you, when you drive home? It'll be tough. Uh -huh. how, how far up does Johns Hopkins move? How far down does North Carolina go? Maryland with a big win. Notre Dame stays at two, it looks like. Cornell stay in the top ten. I think Hofstra is going to be somewhere in that six, seven, eight, nine range. I can't I can't kick Virginia out of the top ten yet. Penn, yeah. Penn and Villanova and Denver hovering around that 9, 10, 11, 12 spot. Three teams from the Big East in the top ten right now. Villanova losing yesterday in South Bend 12-8. Irish broke that one open in the fourth quarter. How about Brian Carolunas? Long stick midfielder from Virginia. John Desco just wouldn't stop raving about the, the playmaking ability of Carolunas. How about John Donowski? Had a chance to see that game on tape. First time he saw him, his direct quote, he's all that. Earlier this year, eight cause turnovers, eight ground balls in the win over Princeton. And he had the takeaway that led to the fast break that tied that ball game up. A week ago, we could see him in Eight the NCAA takeaways. tournament. That's like a career for, for a guy like you, a position-based, fundamental style defender. You reading the Notre Dame media guide again, Quint, getting ready for that game on the 30th. Cut, goal. Keo joins the party. Game-winning goals is a specialty 
the ability to operate in the phone booth. Palasek leans in. He just cuts. I, I guess his defender, well, his defender was ball watching. And it's one of the reasons I really like Tommy Palasek for the Syracuse team and getting involved in the play early and kind of get him uh, comfortable with the flow of the game because he's got such great vision. He's very quick. If you can get the ball to Kehoe on the inside and Timmy Desco, you know, he's a player who can get the ball to the right people in the right uh, situations. A well-timed cut by Kehoe. He saw the label on the back of Eamon's helmet and boom. Got to keep that head on a swivel. We talk about that every week. He's been making a career of that in Syracuse. 115 career goals now for the senior from Canada. One of the best haircuts in college across, sporting the, the mohawk that he continues to shave. Make up your mind, I thought you were a Rob Guida flow guy well, in the game they're, they're both first team all hair. That's what you get to in nine two ball games in the first half. Quint breaking down haircuts. Here's Walsh. Galloway again. Saw that pass telegraphed, came out for the pickoff, and then the long pass is incomplete. And, and there's no question that's in Duke's scouting report when they're playing Syracuse, that Galloway loves on that throwback to X to step out and cut off the passing lane. Wolf trying to show off that speed, and he had laid beat, but he made the pass. And then an easy save for Galloway. Closing seconds of the first half. Touchdown! There it is. We got the second chance. And then time runs out. Not much of a horn here at the Meadowlands, but Galloway with the interception and the bomb. John Desco, smile coach, who dominated that first half. The number one team in the country making a statement against the national champions. The Qs up by seven. Duke is on its heels as Jovan Miller and the Orange came out ready to rumble right from the opening whistle. It's halftime in Jersey. It's halftime here of game two of the Conoco Minolta Big City Classic Syracuse with a comfortable seven goal lead on Duke. Now let's take a look at a warrior procession on fast breaks with Quint, Ned Crotty, and Matt Donowski. This halftime report is presented by Warrior. All hail. And now a warrior procession with Quint Kesnick. Four on three fast break is an electric moment in a lacrosse game that places a lot of pressure on the point man. Run and gun transition offense is about keeping the ball hot and dishing the rock to the next open man. Dicing the defense with ball movement and precision passing. The exclamation point is a slam dunk. Celebration sold separately. We're joined by a pair of Tawaratan Trophy winners, Matt Donowski, Ned Crotty, along with Jeff Snyder. And typically you play the point. Take us through the, the thought process behind managing all the decisions that are involved. Well, four and three happens very quickly. You want to make quick decisions. So a big part of that is receiving the ball in the middle of the field so you can see the entire space. I like to receive the ball right here in the middle of the field about 12 yards away. That's about my range. Now I can see the defenseman for both guys. I'm not looking at the attack as much as I look at the defenseman. If Ned's guy leaves early, that's my home run pass. I'm hitting Ned right away. If he's covered, then I'm looking right down to Jeff at the right side. If he's covered, that means I should be open for a shot. What's important to emphasize about your po body posture? Because it looks like you're a threat to do a, a lot of stuff. You can, you can pass, you can shoot, you can dodge. Yeah, right here when I catch the ball in the middle of the field, I'm in a loaded position. I'm loaded, I'm ready to step in and shoot if I have to, and I can see the entire field and make both feeds if I need to. Ned, uh, I want you guys to flip it up. Uh, you don't look very comfortable down low. Well, anything different from the way you operate when you're the point man? No, you know, obviously both going to Duke and learning from the same coaches that just add to that. You know, communication is vital in lacrosse and the fast break is no different. You have to let the midfielder coming down know, know what the situation is. You have to let him know, you know, fast break, four on three, five on four. So you have to let him know so he doesn't have to turn around and look. And then from there, I would say sneak a peek. And what that means is that as the midfielder's running down, before you get the ball, you want to kind of sneak a peek. As you're running to the middle of the field, like Dino said, you want to sneak a peek and see where the defensemen are. Are they kind of cheating a little bit? Are they staying on their man? That way, when you catch the ball, you have a better idea of when you turn your head what you're going to be looking at. So like a quarterback in football, you've got to read through your progressions, have great fundamentals, play with flair, and play with creativity. And you'll score a lot on your four and three fast breaks. 
Welcome back to the Warrior Halftime Report here in New Jersey. Not much for the fans in black and blue to cheer for as the Syracuse Orange are rolling. And earlier today, Johns Hopkins with a big first quarter, and then they held on to knock off North Carolina as number six breaks through against the heels, winning it by one. First time in a long time, Johns Hopkins has beaten top 10 opponents back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, John Rannigan was terrific, at least uh, four points. He was involved in a, a bunch of other goals, and Billy Bitter put on a show. Good to see him back to full form. But Hopkins, young team, learning how to win, much improved from early in March. North Carolina will be looking to bounce back next week against Virginia on ESPN when we return to the Big City Classic. Highlights of the first half dominated by number one. Welcome back to game two of the Konica Minolta Big City Classic. Nighttime in the big city. You can take the circle line around the island of Manhattan to enjoy all the scenery and go sightseeing and not much for the Duke fans to enjoy on their trip north to New Jersey. Eamon McEnany along with Matt Ward and Quint Kesnick. And I think it's safe to say Syracuse kind of taking out its frustrations a little bit on Duke in that first half. Back-to-back -back weeks where they struggled on offense and all of a sudden they can't miss. I mean, they hit on... I don't, I don't know what, six of their first seven shots, and, and they, they look sharp. Nine goals, nine different goal scores, everything clicking right now. How does Duke respond? They're going to need to find some athletes who can match up against these, these defensive players for Syracuse, especially the D-middies. Kevin Drew has been lights out for Syracuse, and they just Duke needs to attack them but do it a lot better and maybe switch up some, some personnel who maybe a little more speed than some of the brute strength that they've been trying to go after them. Attack, the key word for Syracuse, because they were ready to attack in this one right after the national anthem. Got off to a good start. Jovan Miller to Amadon, a pair of senior middies, guys who are drafted, and then some soft goals. Ian Zito puts that through the legs of Wigreiser. Not much of an angle for Jovan Miller. Eilers, first career goal, and then the fast break, a four on three. Nice dishing of the rock, but again, the inside pipe left open. Galloway's been terrific. A couple inside stops. Shocking to me that actually Duke is, has outshot Syracuse. 17 to 16. The eraser part two living up to the billing here at the Big City Classic against Jordan Wolf. And John Lid's not the most impressive player when you watch him. But the thing is, he takes every talented player he ever guards out of the games. You look at this list, that is impressive. Steel Stan is most likely going to be first team All-American. Jordan Wolf has been killing everyone, shut out in the first half. He doesn't do it with flash, but he does it with class. He is unbelievable shutting down these players. Back in the late 90s, early 2000s, John Glatzel was the eraser for the Oranges. Syracuse was winning titles. Now John Lade has earned that nickname as he erases the other team's best offensive attackman. And he did that in the first 30 minutes. Positives for Duke in that second quarter. They started winning faceoffs. They, they've won nine of the 13 draws today. They won four out of five. A comeback would hinge some faceoff wins into goals and transition. Wig Riser's got to play better and a team that can find something on offense in the half field set. So Costabile trying to come up with the ground ball and he does and he gets popped and there's a flag. Push with possession. Free possession for Duke if they can come up with the ground ball and keep it in the box. But Matt Harris. Has been a demon on ground balls in this ball game, and he comes up with that one. And, and talking about a way for them to get back in this is maybe Syracuse starts fouling a bit there. That's a good start for Duke right here in the second half to get that push in the back. And they can only hope uh, for for Syracuse to continue playing a little sloppy on defense with throwing their bodies around and taking uh, ill-advised hits. There's another look at the penalty. You get there first, good things are going to happen. Put yourself in a position where you're the first guy there. Make the scoop and draw the push. Duke go for three in the first half on the extra man. Here's Turry. Looking to extend his point streak. So far, he's been kept off the box score. Now Turry moves it along. Galloway with the kick save. He's got eight. Wolf with the inside roll, and he says erase this. Does it count? Could have been a dive. It counts. Wolf gets the goal. I think they're going to say he didn't leave his feet. I think he's going to have kept his feet on the ground, and the ball's going to be in the back of the net before he lands in the crease, which, which is allowed. It's when the player launches himself. Uh, we'll see in the replay here whether or not he does. 
Uh, but you can see here, Jordan Wolf does a nice job. A quick inside roll, fights up the field. His hands and, land in the crease. And, it, you know, that's that's questionable. Uh, Duke's happy that they don't call it in the crease right there. I think his toe right there is in the crease before he shoots it as well. So there was instant replay in the cross. I imagine that one would be coming back. Syracuse fans know the crease rules pretty well right about now after that ball game against Johns Hopkins. So do the Blue Jay fans. So do the Blue Jay fans. As Kyle Wharton's apparent game-winning goal was wiped out in the first overtime, Stephen Keogh won it in the second overtime. I thought it was interesting that week Syracuse fans talking basketball wanted to say, hey, that over and back against Marquette never should have been called. I said, hey, how about what about that crease call on Kyle Wharton? And they're like, oh, you know, that's a tough call for the official. I think for the players, take a chance. If you have to dive, then dive. The worst thing they can do is wipe the goal out. I mean, the best thing you can do is put the ball in the net and force the refs to take the goal, uh, the goal off the scoreboard, right? And if anything, duck under and then kind of hit the brakes. And the defenseman's just going to hit your back, and then you can play off it and make it look like a push, even though it, it really wasn't. Turry being guarded by Harder. West Islip against Garden City. Turry going to the right-hand shot. I'll tell you, Wolf's the type of guy, Major League Lacrosse has dive shots. Wolf's the type of guy, if he were playing in that era of dives, he, he could launch himself with his speed. It would be unbelievable. And, and think about Billy Bitter. If he has that in his game, the dive shot, there's going to be no one who can stop him underneath. Uh, and, and Jordan Whoops, that type of player with that type of quickness. Guys, he's just a freshman. You're already putting him in the pros. Relax, GM Kessinick. Nothing stopping him from coming out of the, I don't think so, you coming out of your first year. Duke's holding, trying to hold on to Kyrie Irving. Now you got Jordan Wolf going pro. So Trapuca could handle the pass, so it's a turnover, and the Orange get it back. You got Austin Rivers coming in next year. Don't worry about <laughs> Kyrie Irving. There is a cliche, they're ready to go. They don't rebuild, they reload. Here is Jovan Miller. Over to Thompson as we get our first look at the Syracuse offense here in the second half. Amidon being guarded by Trapuca. Desco can't make the grab on the high pass. So Wigreiser brings it in and moves it over to Connors. Syracuse has come out a bit flat here and started the second half, which is a good sign for Duke and their efforts to, to climb away at this uh, six, six goal deficit. Terry on the rollback. Galloway with another one. He's got nine. Galloway is exceptionally strong to the offside high. He's got that strong top hand and quick boom. It pops it to the head of the stick from his right shoulder to his left. I favor shooting down around his knees, especially a stick side low shot. You know, so many really good goalies struggle. They're always kind of cheating offside. You can get them that, that stick side low area is, is off a high release. It's one of my favorite shots in my long career as a shooter. With the Baltimore Thunder. <laughs> Jovan Miller shake and bake back to his right, high to high. Blow some serious heat by Wigreiser. He has two. And Jovan Miller may be the most important player on the Syracuse team right now. If he can develop into a constant threat with the ball in his stick, dodging like he does right here, Syracuse becomes unguardable. Jovan Miller, quick acceleration, nice split dodge. Gets the stick back and buries it perfect location to the near post, but off hip. Great shot. You see Wig Riser's stick never moved. His body did. He got he moved his body towards it, but that stick, his hands got in tight and his stick never moved across his face. We're just talking about Galloway's ability. His hands are away from his body and his and his, he's able to utilize that quickness in his wrists. Wig Riser got tight. Miller dusted him offside high. Standout football player at CBA in Syracuse. He's taught the game of lacrosse by a family friend known as Mr. P. And he's really impressed Coach Desco with his work ethic during his time at Syracuse. Jovi Nation will be pumped up. This is game two of the Big City Classic from the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Number one Syracuse in orange with a seven goal lead on the defending national champion Duke Blue Devils. Eamon McEnany along with Quint Kessenick and Matt Ward Syracuse is moving in on its eighth straight victory to open up the season. Lawson gets free and goes upstairs past Wigreiser. Much improved from last season. Worked on his shooting in the, in the off summer months. See him isolate against the freshman Harris. 
gets himself to a good spot, the left to right move. Leaves himself enough angle. Lawson, a sophomore out of Middlesex Academy, defensive specialist a year ago. Miller comes up with the ground ball, but we'll have a call on a hold. And it was against Duke, so Syracuse will hold on to it. Yeah, Costabile trying to top the stick of his opponent there, but the, that doesn't work as well nowadays with the new face-off rules, where you're not allowed to, to, to pin. So now Syracuse will throw out its second midfield line, which has come alive with some play. Loy has an assist. Ainzito has a goal. Eilers has a goal as well, but now it's Gilbert out there, number two. It is illegal for a faceoff player to use his cross to hold or pin down the cross of an opponent. So that, that topping, theoretically. Here's Loy, the freshman out of Ohio. Former hockey player of the year in Ohio, moves it along to Ianzito. He has one already. Don't know if Wigreiser got a piece of that or if it hit a pipe. A post the shot that Joe Von Miller had there. Wigreiser did a nice job coming over the top and getting to that offside shot. Costabile can't keep it in bounds. So Wigreiser has five saves, but Syracuse gets the ball back. And ESPNU's coverage of college lacrosse continues Saturday afternoon as these number one Syracuse Orange take on the Princeton Tigers. Old Spice College Lacrosse on ESPNU Saturday at 4 Eastern. The Tigers getting Tigers getting a much needed overtime win yesterday in the Ivy League as they are banged up to say the least. Jack McBride will miss the remainder of the season. So now questions about his status for next year, whether with Princeton or another school will be resolved this week. But a tough go of it for Coach Bates in his second year. Some guys that he thought he could count on out for the year. Princeton's defense and goaltender Tyler Fiorito, guys like John Cunningham and Chad Weedmark deserve a hats off. They're hanging tough and, and they're doing everything they can to keep that team in the games. They're not scoring any goals this year. And if you watch Tyler Fiorito play, he is probably having his best year of his career, uh, yet he's just not getting the support, as you mentioned, uh, from his offensive players. That'll be from down the road. Take the turnpike to Route 1 and go to class of 1952 Stadium. Marasco feed inside. That could be a play of the day nominee. Marasco. To Keo, one for the highlight reel behind the back. Senior righty, he's got all the tricks in his arsenal. This one is actually an, an angle increaser. It's a wraparound of, of not, a, not, a, not a true over the head. It's more of a wraparound. It's, 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 called, it's, it's called so around fast. Around the world is what a lot of the offensive players like to do where you take it from your right side and wrap it around your left shoulder. <laughs> Talk about location, he bounces it off offside. Offside, and that's just a great job. And then Keo loves the celebration, touch the ground, point to the sky. I'm not sure I want to get an explanation of where that comes from. Now, because he is a right-handed player and he cuts there, it's a little awkward. Many young players are taught to cut left-handed there, but he's as effective being a one-handed player because he has that behind the back. I mean, option, correct? The, the ball was not in his stick for but half a second. I mean, he, it was one motion where he caught it. Most kids don't have the skill. And like you said, you want to go, most Americans do, left-handed because they can protect their bot, the stick with their, their right shoulder. Keo didn't need to because he's so skilled and gets it out of his hand. Likes to keep it in that strong hand. See, I'm a big believer in keeping the, the ball in your strength as much as possible at this high elite level. When you're a young player, obviously you want to work on your offhand, develop it, get it as good as you can. But at, at critical moments, and to me, there's some great players, guys like Kevin Crowley and the Gates and Marichek and all the Canadians, they're never changing hands. And especially in time and room shots, uh, and when you're dodging inside, I see that. What you like to see is maybe I'll shoot either hand on, on the run. What a save on the bouncer by Galloway. Make it two in a row. He has 11. If he's going to get win 52, he's going to earn it with some spectacular saves. You know, going back to what you say about, you know, your strong hand, I found it interesting talking to Coach Desco earlier this year before the Virginia game about the gates. When they arrived on, on campus, they tried to go left to left and right to right. And he'd say, but well, Coach, that's wasting so much movement. I could just do this behind my head. They were drill busters in their line drills their first year when, when they, they were forced to play right-handed. 
Ever since then, Syracuse lacrosse has kind of been, all right, go be creative. Make the play is what it comes down to. In this event last year, Coach Desco's son might have came up with the goal of the year between his legs, not looking at the goal against Princeton. And this, I really think, is kind of a pivotal moment for Duke in this game where they need to start making their run right now. They can't waste any more time and really need to start winning faceoffs, controlling possession uh, of the ball, and, and play better team offense. So now Dion, the original starter at the attack position back in February, gives it up to Howell. Here's Rotance. Saul White coming, goes back to his left. That shot sails on him on the left. He's a right-handed player, Rotans. Defense is going to allow him that alley shot, lefty. Wolf trying to lose late. Sends it up to Rotans instead. Rotans, the junior out of Fairfield Prep, gets checked by Harder. See how condensed all the orange jerseys now in front of the goal? Look at him. They're all in the paint. Here's a step down opportunity. High to high. How? He has two. He really is a great shooter. I just love his stroke over the top. He's smart. He gets to the right places. Jordan Wolf does a nice dodge here, isolating from behind. Uh, he splits right to left on, on Laid, has his head up, and Howell just steps over the top. And just a miscommunication from Syracuse's defense to let him that open. Slight miscommunication. As I said, they're packing it into the point where there wasn't a defender outside of 10 yards. Step down effective uh, against a defense that's really packed in. Howell does have that smooth release. Costabile gets a whack in, and Walsh comes up with the ground ball. Are we putting this one on ice too early as the Blue Devils try to fight back in it? Now here's Hal. Seven minutes left in the third. Here's Tucker Virtue. To Offit, being guarded by New Jersey native Joe Moore. He'll be returning home next week to the Princeton area out of West Windsor Plainsboro High School. Now Virtue being guarded by Miller. Now Wolf trying to get an angle on the lead. Gets a step right down goal line extended and buries it, but he goes in the crease. This time the refs are all over 3-1 and it gets wiped out. Jordan Wolf, though, is a real deal right there. He's going against John Lade, a great cover guy. Look at the speed he has underneath. He's going to be causing havoc for defenses for years to come. When he was playing high school at Lower Marion, one of his coaches was John Christmas, your former teammate with Virginia and the star in the MLL. He told me this week. That one, I don't think he was in the crease. I didn't see it. They're certainly not on that replay. But that back to John Christmas. He said his quickness. This is John Christmas's quote to me this week. His quickness. Nothing, nothing. That right in foot the air, there? No. Yep. So. 0 for 2, it, it gentlemen. All, it all evens out, right? John Christmas said his quickness reminds he's second only to Mikey Powell. That's quite a quick claim by a guy who knows lacrosse and respects game, as you would who, might say. Who's a pretty quick player himself. Right. Talk about change of direction. John Christmas had a great career at UVA, won a national championship, and to get that praise to Jordan Wolf uh, couldn't mean more to him. Wigreiser makes another save. That one had some juice on it. Clearing. But virtually can't make Duke. the catch. So numbers again. Marasco to Kia. Good recovery defense by Tom Montelli. Keo's pass gets through somehow. We were looking for another highlight real goal there from Tim Desco. A tough shot. Tay Duke's running too many guys off the field. Right now they're subbing three guys. And, and Syracuse is pressing down and giving them all sorts of problems on the, in, in, in the clearing and riding game here. Chapuca sends it up to Molinari. Look at the numbers. Five of 12 on the clears. Five of 12, that's horrendous. 
That's about as bad as it gets in, in terms of a top tier team playing that poorly. Guadagnolo takes it away. And, and that right there is almost a fail clear because they're still substituting because they ran so many people off the field, like you mentioned, Quint. Drew has Jets. And Wigreiser. Now playing very well between the pipes for Duke. He has seven saves. Keystone Cops. Montelli tracks it down, wasting time on the clear. And they get it to Rotans, who has Turi wide open in the middle of the field if he can get it to him. And he keeps it himself. So can Duke get into a flow offensively with 4-10 left to play in the third, now off a successful clear. Rotance. Drew getting some wax in. Now Wolf playing with some confidence, lining up the eraser one more time. Laid looking for help. Wolf coming hard, makes the pass. Turry. Still looking to get in the box score. White all over him. Now Trapuca. Quick ball movement. Oh, they had Turry open. That was nice offense there until he dropped the ball. It was. It was dodge, pass, pass, and that's usually where you get your best opportunities. Turry looking to draw the double, moves it along. Rotans. Galloway ready for it. Flat-footed shot. 12 saves. This may be Galloway's best game of the year so far. I, I know Duke's taken some poor quality shots, but Galloway hasn't let any of them in, and he's absolutely robbed them on a few occasions as well. He looks good. He looks sharp. There have been games this year that, it, honestly, it's tough for him to get in the flow because he sees so few shots. Rochester Rattlers head coach B.J. O'Hara thrilled that he was still there on the board, and they were able to pick him in the MLL draft. One of what, seven Syracuse seniors drafted? You got it. I think the Water Boys got picked by the Long Island Lizards. Experience, winning, and why not when you take a look at that record? Six losses. Out of those seven, Quinn, who do you think will emerge as the most dominant player in the MLL? Uh, Joel White will fit in right from day one. Uh, I think Jovan Miller. I think Jovan Miller, if, if, if their coaching staff is smart enough to realize his limitations, what he's good at, not ask him to do what, what he can't do. Keo's going to be a finisher on the inside. The question I have is with uh, Amadon, Josh Amadon. I'm, I'm not sure how he projects in the professional game. He could be better. What a move by Marasco. But Wigreiser with the denial. Amadon may be better at the pro level because he's such a good catch and shoot midfielder. And if other players can give him good looks and shots, he's the type of guy who could maybe score 20 goals in, in a summer. There's a look. Joel White going second to Rochester. Jeremy Thompson. Four in the top 10. You know, Jeremy Thompson's a guy that may be kind of falling off the radar a little bit here since a strong start. What is, is he a. Uh, can he break down a defender in the next level? It's going to be interesting how Hamilton tries to use him, whether or not he can take advantage of his skill set. I just don't know if he's explosive enough, but he's a good face-off type player. Trapuca takes advantage of his skill set, the New Jersey resident. The last time he played an athletic contest in this zip code, the state championship football game for Mountain Lakes, he had a touchdown as the Lakers beat Glenrock 35-21. Trapuca much improved from from a, uh, what we've seen earlier this season dodging to the middle of the field left-handed capitalizing on a Syracuse defense that really wasn't set or ready in their slide packages a positive quarter for Duke it r really is they've outscored Syracuse four to two back-to-back -back goals don't look now but it's only a five goal margin so regardless of what happens I, I think they're showing some signs of of getting out of the funk that they started this game in. And Co Coach Janowski, more than most coaches, builds on those type of runs and, and understands that this is an early season game. It doesn't really matter that much at the end of the day. But if his team gets better, they'll be there. Wolf can't th put that one on Cage. Duke coming alive at the X, winning nine of the last 11 faceoffs.
40 seconds left to play in the quarter. Here's Thompson being guarded by another Mountain Lakes resident, Greg DeLuca. Keo draws hips. That's Marasco, excuse me. And there's Joel White. And the putback, Keo. Keo for loose change again as his classmate was robbed by the pipe. Keo has another hat trick. Career number 18. In the right place at the right time. Number 28. He almost was crashing the boards there before the initial shot was taken. You know, there are guys who have that, that instinct, that savvy, that innate ability to know where the ball's going to go before it goes there. But from the indoor game, so many of those shots are inside saves and uh, rebounds are key. And you saw Keo was moving in the right direction before the shot was taken. And it's a luxury to have a player like that on your team. I was fortunate enough to play with Matt Poske, the MLL MVP last year. And he was the one player who's always running towards the cage as the shot was going off and was so good at those ground balls and those rebound opportunities. Here in New Jersey, when you hear the name Matt Poske, it named pretty familiar. The all-time leading high school goal scorer is Jojo Marasco. Put some juice on that one. And blows it by Wig Riser. 2 2 easy has two. And, and that was one of the things we talked to Coach Desco about. What has Jojo Morasco really improved in his sophomore campaign? He said, to tell you the truth, he has gotten more range on his outside shot. You see it there. That's what he's talking about. That is a turn and shoot from 12. You don't see that very often from any attack. Morasco told us he really likes operating in front of the goal more than he does behind the goal where he can use his split and his change of direction he just feels like he has more space to create last year this event against princeton was his coming out party his first career hat trick and then he got hurt never really got back on the flow or on the field he had 13 points in his last four games before getting injured and that will do it for the third quarter so every time you think duke might have a chance to make this one interesting John Desco's club has the answer. They're looking to land the knockout punch as we move to the fourth quarter. Syracuse up by seven as we get ready for the fourth quarter. Let's take a look at our game track brought to you by Warrior. A balanced attack for the number one team in the country. 8-1 lead in the second quarter by the Orange, 9-2 at half. They had been struggling on offense, shooting 17% the last two weeks, five goals apiece. But at its core, this team is based on defense and goaltending. They're going to hold you. you know, they're, they're holding everybody below 10, basically. Another double-digit save effort for John Galloway as he is 15 minutes away from becoming the all-time winningest goalie in Division I college lacrosse right now, tied with Scott Bachkalupa of Princeton with 51. Scott told me on the phone, when you win that many games, it means you were good enough to play as a freshman and you're on some pretty good teams. Two national champions in an undefeated senior season so far would be a testament to that. Costabile wins another faceoff for Duke. Is this how he won the national championship? But Galloway saw that tape and he's ready for the save. So Amadon gets it in the box. They said his game against Villanova was the best game of his senior year, but maybe now it's this one against Duke with 13 saves and some of them of the spectacular variety. So you want to win faceoffs and you want to win ground balls. Duke's won both and they're down by seven. How do you explain that, Quinn? Offensive efficiency coupled with defensive stops I mean this is a Syracuse team if you don't score in other ways than six on six half field I don't think you can beat the Syracuse team I, I think to beat them you got to get to 11 or 12 goals and to do that you got to open things up you got to score on fast breaks extra man restarts transition they're just too good in the half field set so then who's out there that can do it we saw them once they put the clamps down on Virginia well, for, that team down Virginia could Brown. have done it that night because I, I thought Virginia tired a bit in the second half and offensively, they became stagnant where they were watching Shamel dodge. He had the two second half goals. And in that game, Syracuse had a couple goals. One bounced off a UVA player's helmet. 
Virginia had one taken away, so that game could have gone anyway. Virginia just has athletes in the midfield, but I think Notre Dame can play with them because they can play that defensive style of play. But can Notre Dame score? Six on six, do so they have a guy who can beat a guy? Can Zach Brenneman beat Joel White like Rannigan did with two goals up in the dome? I I'm not sure he can, but to be honest, I don't know if Syracuse's offensive players, they're looking good tonight, are going to be able to play against a Notre Dame team that is that deep on the defensive end. Notre Dame can match defense. Notre Dame can shut down uh, Syracuse arms. The face-offs will be big in that ball game, and the, the goalie battle should be a push. Wow, that's some compliment for Kemp, a sophomore, well, during I mean, his career. I, I mean, Galloway has played his best game of the year, uh, right uh, of the year right now. Coming into this game, his numbers are a little down this year. I mean, honestly, he's, he's typically been about a 55 or 56 percent guy. He hasn't been there this year. And not that he's played bad or anything. Here's Turry looking to get in the box score. The Irish and the Orange will face off on April 30th, so plenty of lacrosse left before that showdown. But on prime time in the Carrier Dome, Notre Dame still has to play Georgetown next week here Coming into play tonight, John Galloway was 25th in save percentage. There's a big pop, and that draws a flag on Guadagnolo. Rotans got popped, and so John Desco will be man down. Right here, two minutes. Just one minute on the illegal body check to the head. Let's take a look. Nice solid check. I think it's a late hit is what the penalty should have been. Well, right? he, he hit him with one hand on the stick, which is uh, an automatic foul. But, you know, that, that's not a two-minute foul. If he, if, if, if he hit him in the chin or the helmet, it would have been, it, it, it is a two-minute foul. But they, they got that right. So one minute. Now for the Duke extra man. He's one of five so far here tonight. Tommy Wren with some high heat. Did that one get deflected? Galloway's body language. Indicated that this ball might have changed trajectory. Real time. Yeah, it did. You could hear it, and the ball actually came out of there like an egg, like it had some spin on it. And, and, see, and you see Galloway? The, the clear indication when the ball gets tipped, actually Virginia yesterday had two goals in the beginning of the game that were tipped that one in. And right there you can see Galloway dipped his stick because that's the initial read. And, and to be honest, he's such a good goal, he usually gets that initial read right. And then see it go upstairs, nothing you can do about that. Absolutely nothing you can do about that. So Harder now getting a shot at faceoffs, and he wins it pretty cleanly over Costabile. So Syracuse using several different people at the X right now. Another crowd of over 25,000 on hand here at the Meadowlands for the Big City Classic. 25,115. To see four programs that have combined for 25 national championships. And Monday night, ESPNU delivers two shows to preview the men's tournament championship. First at 1 Eastern. Catch a special edition of the experts as host Lowell Galindo and our experts preview the championship game of the men's tournament. Then at 5 Eastern, see the College Basketball Live National Championship Special. That's all coming up on Monday, starting at 1. Can Kemble Walker duplicate Danny Manning in the Miracles with Kansas, or is Butler a true Cinderella story, a mid-major cutting down the nets? Marasco getting doubled as Montelli and Dupree are all over him. And he splits it momentarily. DeLuca. Gives him a pop. And Coach Desco had the timeout ready to go. We'll take a break here in New Jersey. Coach Desco's club up by six. Looking to start the season eight and oh. 
Where will DeLon Carter, Doug Ho go in their NFL careers? When will they be drafted? Syracuse stars on the football field awaiting to hear about their future. Say Ryan Bartholomew is a guy whose stock went up. He could get himself drafted. Combine bench press numbers were off the charts. People say he could go to four, anywhere between the fourth and sixth round. They're fired up about football once again in Syracuse. Doug Marone with the turnaround job at his alma mater. Capped off with a win in the Pinstripe Bowl, the first, the inaugural Pinstripe Bowl over Kansas State. Last time we were up in the Dome, I had the opportunity to work out in their football and lacrosse gym with Ryan Nassib. Quarterback, riding the bike, doing his homework. Good kid. Need some receivers, though. They think the players are coming. Hey, they had some nice playmakers in that bowl game. Jovan robbed of his first career hat trick there by the crossbar. And Montelli drops it off for Wolf. Wolf now has a new matchup. This is David Hamlin, the sophomore out of New Hartford, New York. McGill and Guadagnolo still out there, but laid. Could his night be done? Getting a new look at some of the attack as well. Colin Donahue, number 17, out there. And Coach, Coach Desco knows he has a veteran-laden ball club right now. He's told us all year he needs to get some new guys out there and get some game experience. For next year? That makes sense. I am personally think it's a bit early to start rotating people in at 10 minutes left. Duke is still a skill team. They're dominating face-offs. Now I would probably let this, this clock click down a, a few more minutes before I start doing this. Well, to, to me, I like... Uh, as a backup player, I want to be thrown in a, in a meaningful game when the game still is on the line. Rather, were, you, rather, were you a backup player? Second grade? Come on, quit. You were a starter your whole life. That's right. Never, never. Never. <laughs> My brothers uh, told me about it. <laughs> Here's Stephen Coyle trying to break down the defense. Look, you, you got to play some backups with some starters if you ultimately want to get them better. Lawson. Gets popped by about three guys and finally loses it. I hate it in sports with two minutes to go and they put in all the backups together. It, then the quality just... Yeah, because it meant the other team was going to fire away at you. Yeah. Put in one or two backups with your starters and see how they handle themselves. Here's Offit being guarded by JoJo Moore. Step down opportunity for Howe. And he gets drilled. It's a good little fake. Should have let it rip. Yep. Yeah, I get that, but now these teams are playing more and more games as the season goes along, so there's more opportunity to get players in. You know, I, I think Syracuse is very comfortable in charge of this game, but you can give Jordan Wolf a matchup on a player, he's probably going to take advantage of it. To John Desco's defense, they haven't really played any bottom dweller type teams. So every team's has, been ranked. Here's they haven't played, yeah, So they haven't had those free wins where you, where you can go deep. You know, they're not playing VMI on a Tuesday night. I mean, who would you say is their weakest opponent that they played so far? Albany. 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 And they just Top knocked 20 off. Team. They just knocked off Harvard. Denver might get a home game. Army certainly was looking like he would get a home playoff game. Off the turnover. Walsh fires one past Galloway. His second as Duke takes advantage of some Syracuse sloppiness. the assist off the broken clear the freshman Walsh nice placement and it was very patient he realized that he had time to step in and this was very deliberate in his release and the placement of the shot Justin Turry number 12 out on the wing for Duke he has a point in 23 consecutive games that streak in jeopardy right now as we approach the eight minute mark but Montelli comes out for another Duke ground ball momentarily that was a nice clean pick up there, but Harris all over him. Yeah, it, if you were to tell me that Duke would be up by 10 on the faceoff battle, I think they're winning this game, and I'm certainly not thinking they're down by 50, uh, by five, 50, by five goals. The, go, the goalie differential early, the clearing stats, not sure what the old, other contested ground ball stats are either. And there's that man again, Matt Harris, forcing Rotance out of bounds. This, 
strong freshman season continues. And before you tune into the women's NCAA National Championship game, catch ESPNU's two preview shows. First at 1 Eastern, catch a special edition of the experts as host Lowell Galindo and our experts preview the women's NCAA National Championship game. Then at 6 Eastern, see the College Basketball Live Women's NCAA National Championship Special. Will it be a Connecticut Daily Double? Already, Connecticut's become the first school to make it to a BCS Bowl game in both the men's and women's Final Four in the same academic year. Will they also cut down the nets in both men's and women's hoops? Palasek loses it out of bounds, but off the stick of hips, so they'll hold on to it. On the cut, catch can't be made. Offsides, Duke, so it'll stay Syracuse ball. That's not the way you saw it, Matt Ward? It looked to me like a clear push in the back on the Duke player, ending up face down on the other side of the ball. Usually refs give you the offense player the benefit of the doubt when they're boxing out. The defenseman behind him just steamrolls them over, over the midfield line. Good time to take a dive. A a anytime someone's behind you playing your back, if you fall over the majority of the time, the refs are going to give you that the benefit of the doubt on that push call. Ian Zito being guarded by Molinari. Finds an open man, but... Eilers couldn't bring it in. John Galloway right now with a season high 15 saves as he closes in on career win number 52. It's an important shift for the, these second line midfielders. Guys who haven't done much this year, although Eilers has a goal tonight and Ian Zito does too, but a, a lot of the criticism towards Syracuse offense this year is directed at their lack of complimentary scoring. And that's come from the head coach. He's been looking for a unit in the lineup as DeLuca comes up with the ground ball. This guy's a big time high school football player shows off his jets. He also walked on the Duke team this year. Good ball movement. The extra pass, the shot, and the goal. That's how you run a fast break, and Howell has the hat trick. Coach Desco might want to get John Lade back out there. What a great shot. What, what an amazing shot. Starts with defense, aggression, flooding the ground ball. The big man rumbles up the field. I'd say DeLuca's a, as good of an athlete as we'll see. Share the rock, didn't think the angle was there, but what a shot. And how is so good at that step up the field on the fast break and really turning his shoulders and getting enough power on it to beat the goalies that close to the cage, up high, which you don't see very often. His 20th career hat trick. 545, 13-9. Zach Howe now fourth among active players in hat tricks with 20. So Joel White out there on Tripuca. Now we're, of course, speculating that John Lade's out of the game because they wanted to get someone else a look. We don't... Didn't see him limp or see if he was hurt at all. So that's just speculation on our part. As you see Jovan Miller by the sidelines trying to shut off Costa Bill, and there is a look at Lade with the ankle iced and wrapped. So obviously it wasn't Coach Desco thinking the game was over. His senior All-American might be banged up. So Chapuca feed inside. Good collapse defense by Guadagnolo. All orange on that ground ball. Drew flips it up to White. But White loses it. Al He's playing hard now. Yep. Costabile didn't know it was there. McGill can't come up with it. And Keo does. Up along to Marasco. In the open field. JoJo going right at the goal. Wigreiser makes the save. We're going the other way. Costabile. Curry's got to go help him out, and he does. Could be some tired players out there with 4.20 to play. Four goals, four minutes. We still have a ball game. Here's Offit. 
Coach Donowski thinks so. He knows this is a critical possession. He wants to talk things over. The team in black all of a sudden playing with some enthusiasm and aggression. The orange regrouping a little bit on the defensive end. Will return with the conclusion of game two of the Big City Classic from New Jersey. This one looked like it was over at 13-6 Syracuse, but the Duke Blue Devils, the defending national champions, have started to play with some pride and have come alive. Coach Donowski's team on a 3-0 run. Seven goal leads through much of this game. A couple rips on the extra man, it was deflected. Christian Walsh, the freshman, off a, a broken clear, made it 13-8, and then Zach Howell, he's got his spot. Right-hander beats Galloway, four goals, four minutes. You play the full 60. I'm impressed with the way Duke has fought back in the second half. If it wasn't for such a shaky start in the cage, I think this game is, is about dead even. You, you fall behind 6-1 before your goalie really even makes a stop. So let's see what they do out of the timeout. Wolf again, no John Lake, but he loses it. McGill coming on the slide. He gets it back, but he's in trouble. Now unsettled as Galloway's way out of the cage. Howe gets inside and draws the penalty. I don't know what you're supposed to do as a defensive player when the guy runs at you, runs into and ducks under. You're supposed to just take a step back and let him run free to the cage. I don't know exactly what you can do here. 42 Syracuse push. So Tim Harder with the push. Let's take a look. Aggressive move by Howe. That must have been 42. Excuse me. 32 is nowhere near there. So Guadagnolo goes. Well, Noel had to do that, that that situation there. He had to close. You got to close, yeah. You got to close the space, and if the rest are going to call, at least you prevented the goal. So Rin had one on the extra man, 16. He's a flamethrower. Dion has four extra man goals on the season. He's number zero. Chapuka looking for him, but he can't make the catch. That might be a penalty right there. McGill, that's high. Big time break for Duke right there. The ball didn't appear to be tipped. Thrown out of bounds, careless offense. But McGill bails him out with that penalty right there. From this angle, that one looked high. Dion was falling, perhaps. Brian Abbott makes the call. Now you make the call at home. Took his head off. Took his head off. Now, here's my question. Point back to all the late hits and the and the physical play. That's one minute, but Lovejoy last week was a two-minute non-releasable. I think that's much more dangerous. You thought than what the Lovejoy intent? Did. The intent. That's a cross check to the head. Lovejoy was a hit. I understand it was helmet to helmet. But I mean, if you want to get, it's a very valid argument. Ow! That's a catch and shoot. We have a ball game. Look now, three goal margin in three minutes. Snappy ball movement. It's a Duke team that's gotten better and better and better through the course of this game. Zach Cowell's playing himself. What is that, 29 goals in the season? The kid doesn't miss. Yeah, I would have said his over under at the beginning of this year at 30, to be honest, with losing the players they did in Crotty and Quinzani. I didn't know if he had the ability to step up and lead this team, but you look at him. Four goals against Syracuse, one of the best defenses in the country. Uh, he is a player, and he knows how to pick his spots and take advantage of the, the opportunities presented to him. Moving up the scoring charts in Duke history, now 15th all time in points. Huge faceoff. And it's Costabile with a step, four on three. Wolf, Howell, that one's off the cage and there's no backup. Was Costabile closer? Yes. Good hustle by Costabile. Okay, that was one shot that Howell kind of rushed. He didn't seem like he had great balance when he caught the ball. It may have been one where he tried to run, he should have tried to run through the check coming at him rather than get out of the stick as quickly as he did. I don't think Syracuse is organized defensively right now. Some new players out there. They're still down a man. Joe Fazio. 
on the man down because the penalty's on McGill and Lade's hurt. So some inexperienced players out there right now. Ridd. Howe looking for the angle. Trapuca looking for Dion, but this time it gets knocked down and he went in the crease. I'm not a fan of that look right up top right there. I think you'd be a little more patient and make the simple pass at this juncture in the game and, and get a better opportunity than, than risk losing possession. So Duke has to jump the ball down, up a man, down by three goals. Harder will try to run it out. He gets away momentarily. Rin there to meet him, but he finds Morasco. Dupree's got to be all over Morasco now and get a double. Dupree never should have let Morasco receive that ball. Rin there for the double. Morasco bounces off of it, and the penalty's released. And that's a hold on Dupree. It's a great sell job by Morasco. The sophomore out of Somers High School. It's pushed out of bounds by Rin, and there's the flag. Coach Stanowski not happy with that call. As a rep, you have to make that call right there. Got to stick up. It didn't look like he was putting any pressure on it, but as an offense player, you can't, as a defense player, you just can't get your stick up by the head. How's that a hold? How is this a hold? I was having flashbacks to Casey Powell. Acting 101, Jojo Moresco, class, 9 a.m. tomorrow. Because it worked. team in the country two minutes and 11 seconds away from win number eight on the season Duke in jeopardy of seeing its seven game winning streak being snapped by the Syracuse Orange Eamon McEnany along with Quint Kesnick and Matt Ward and at the beginning of this day Quint we I asked you how clear the college lacrosse picture would be after these two games with Syracuse having the lead now, what have we learned about four top ten programs? Well, I think we learned that Syracuse is legit. The John Lade injury going forward could be a concern. Uh, Duke, some good today and some bad today. If, if they can figure out how, a, a way to get Dan Wigraj to make some stops, I think they're going to be very good. And then the first game today, two young teams will continue to improve and, and get better and better. Uh, that was my thoughts. Uh, Hopkins and Carolina still very close to me in talent level. I, I was really impressed with, with Johns Hopkins. I think they're growing up in front of our eyes and some of these young players. I thought Rannigan and Greeley last year kind of struggled as freshmen, but boy, Rannigan is playing at a top level right now and is in the conversation Second team, first team All-American as a sophomore, he's a player. Last year, Coach Petromala said they really didn't know how to play with each other because when they were in high school, all they did was just take it to the rack. Now they know how well to play with each other, and we saw that certainly today with Rannigan. But right now, there are only two unbeaten teams left. They are both in the Big East, and they could be on a collision course for a showdown on April 30th. And I think what we'll see in the polls this week, I, I think Johns Hopkins will leapfrog the, the, those the two losing programs into a, probably a third spot. Uh, Cornell and Hofstra will, will still be in the top ten, and I think the ACC teams will be somewhere between the, the four slots and, and, and the nine slot, basically. That, that seems like it's fair. How about the ACC? How tough is that league to predict? In Maryland, you say, wow, how, what's wrong with them? They come out with a big win. North Carolina getting smoked by Duke. Then they bounce back at Maryland. That ACC tournament, still obviously some regular season games left to play. But that ACC tournament's going to be a crapshoot. Carolina, from earlier today, they got to still figure out their offense. To, you know, didn't think Galasso was as much of a factor today as I'd like to see. Uh, Bitter and Dunster are going to be the initiators. Got to get more out of some of the other guys. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to call a game for each one of those teams. I know Maryland lost the two games, but right now, if I had to make a pick of a team that could probably make a run in that ACC tournament to take the crown, I think that's the team. There's no doubt the talent Maryland has, obviously, and veteran. There's, you know, that is not a young team at all. Those guys have been through the rigors of college lacrosse. As Joe Von Miller backs up, takes a look at the time, he sees the double coming, and he runs right away from it. Moves it over to Thompson. John Galloway. One minute away from career win number 52, setting a new NCAA record. Scott Bachigalupa out of Princeton told me he wanted to extend congratulations to John and the Syracuse program because he knows what it means to win that many ball games in four years. 
A tremendous respect for the young man out of West Genesee High School as we go the other way. Trakuka to Wolf. Hold on a second. It's a two goal ball game. play but the attack went up by the midfield line Christian Walsh to steal out his man Trapuca has been a playmaker his game has radically improved since we saw this Duke team down in Jacksonville well, he was coming off an injury and he played defensive short stick in that game his coming out party as an offensive player was Maryland he had two goals in that ball game and you know an offensive standout at Mountain Lakes but now a 5-0 run here in the fourth quarter Fowler wins it forward. Thompson takes him down. It'll be Duke Ball. Excuse me, Harder takes him down. Smart play by Harder. Because at this point now, clock stops. They get to set up their defense. Got to go now. Here's Turry being guarded by White. That's probably not the matchup they like, so they get it over to Rotans. Rotans gets whacked and loses it. A good slide and takeaway from number 31, David Hamlin. And now Joel White will look to run out 15 seconds. Use the whole field here. He can take this one back. And he puts on a show there with eight. So it wasn't a strong finish, but certainly a strong start with three seconds left. We have a whistle. And a flag. Interesting game for the Cuse. Best offense we've seen from them this year in the first half, especially. Let's take a look back at that last possession. Nice double team down the alley. Hamlin. White runs to victory and gets pushed. Yeah, the offense was ready to play with a sense of urgency here, obviously. They were tired of hearing about what's wrong with your offense. Only 10 goals in two games in 1925 and 1931 against NYU. Joe Von Miller ready to force the issue, and uh, so were his counterparts. But the big picture for Syracuse and its goalie, John Galloway. A season high in saves and now a career high in wins will be accomplished today. 16 saves. He was good. He was a really, really sharp early. The hands, the feet, always has good balance. He, again, he's a guy that's not going to guess. He's unflappable. He is our Konica Minolta player of the game. Three seconds away from career win number 52 and putting his name in the NCAA record books. And that'll do it. In a meeting of champions, number one flexes its muscles early and holds on to improve to 8-0. Syracuse knocks off Duke 13-11. Quint, they make a statement here today against the Red Hot Duke team? Yes and no. I, I, I thought offensively in the first half it was terrific. It was beautiful. Defensively, they were unbelievable. But Lade gets hurt. Next thing you know, they gave up, what, the last five goals of this game. So not a perfect performance, but, but still very good. Undoubtedly, the number one team in the country. Matt Duke obviously would love to have that first quarter back. What would you take out of this game if you're John Donowski? Duke's a great team, and they get great goaltending. Uh, they have the offensive players to do it. And, and Dan Wigreiser played a hell, a hell of a game after the first quarter, really struggled early on. But if they get consistent goaltending from him, they have the athletes and the players. Jordan Wolf's a special player on the offensive end, and, and they're young and talented. There are only two unbeaten teams left in Division I college lacrosse. Both are in the Big East. Both are on the ESPN Networks next week. Syracuse against Princeton on ESPNU on Saturday. Then Notre Dame with a big one at home against Georgetown Sunday from Arlotta Stadium. Five weeks to go in the regular season before the NCAAs, and things are just heating up. It's going to be a great month of April. It'll be a great weekend next weekend. It starts on Friday with Albany Hopkins. Virginia, North Carolina on ESPN on Saturday as well. Once again, our final score, Syracuse 13, Duke 11. Coming up next, the 2011 All-American High School Basketball Championship. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Quint Kessnick and Matt Ward, I'm Eamon McEnany saying so long from the big city.